My name is Srividya Santosh and in this episode of Career Talks with Sri, you are going to know everything about food technology. If you are a student who has just crossed grade 12, I am sure that you would have heard about this course which is called Food Technology. You have two different courses of Food Technology right after grade 12, of which one is a BSc program in Food Technology and the second one is a B.Tech Food Technology. In this episode, you will know everything about this course as well as the difference between BSc Food Technology and BTEC Food Technology. Let's see what all you will learn if you are taking up this course right after your grade 12. You will learn everything from the selection, preservation, processing, manufacturing, packaging, distribution and safe use of food. Now that means everything about food. Let's get into the practical examples of this. Hope you all have seen ready to cook and ready to eat food in grocery stores, right? If we go to a supermarket or a hypermarket, there will be a lot of ales which will be promoting this particular food items. Now there is a difference between ready to cook and ready to eat items. Ready to eat is nothing but like uh, you can buy that food directly, come to home, you don't need to cook it or like you don't need to process it, you don't need to do anything with that, you can just eat it. For example, maybe cheese, okay? or uh, bread items, uh, you have sandwiches, salads, so many things as such. When it comes to sandwiches and all, some people would prefer to heat and eat it, but it's totally your choice. If you don't want to heat and eat it also, it is perfectly safe for you. These type of food items are called ready to eat items. Now, what is ready to cook items? Uh, probably you'll find um, something like um, frozen pizza, fine. If you're buying a frozen pizza from a supermarket, you have to go back home and then you have to heat it as per the instructions that is given in the uh, label. From there, like you have to proceed further. That is called a ready to cook item. Now, ready to cook item, you have like lot many examples like uh, you'll find frozen vegetables, you'll find frozen fruits. Uh, probably the frozen fruit items are getting marketed a lot nowadays because people are so much into making shakes and all right. So instead of buying a food and then like washing it and then cutting it and then making it a shake or a smoothie, people now prefer to buy a frozen fruit item wherein they can keep it in their refrigerator and at that time like you can just take it and then make a smoothie out of it. Now these items are called ready to cook items. Now, why did I say all these things when I was explaining a food technology course? Because I initially told you that you are going to learn everything from the selection, preservation, processing, manufacturing, packaging, distribution, as well as the safe use of food. Now, think of this ready to cook and ready to eat items with what I said that you will be learning if you are proceeding further with this course. Exactly. That's what you're going to do. Got it? Now, please don't confine your thoughts with ready to cook and ready to eat items. You should also think about the various industries that you will be able to work. Think of a ship, fine. If the ship is moving from a port and is moving to a different country, do you think that while they are voyaging, they will be able to find supermarkets and hypermarkets in between the sea so that like they can buy the items that they like and then cook it or eat it? They can't, right? If they start their voyage, it will be for a few days. So they have to think of what they will be able to eat. And accordingly, they have to store all these items before they start their voyage. Can you imagine what would have happened in the Esther era when people used to move from one country to another country in ship? Probably that was when this food technology or food science and all this sort of things would have started, right? And from there, like it got changed, the technology emerged, so many new things got added up. But what I'm telling you is, it is there from that age. Think of what would have happened when there was war, maybe World War I and World War II. Um, the soldiers who are in the war field, they also need food, right? So how will those food be supplied? So there should definitely be certain items which will provide enough of calories to those soldiers, right? There also food technology played a very crucial role. 
there also they had those ready to cook and ready to eat items that means food technology is not something which got emerged yesterday even though we heard this course which is bsc food technology and btech food technology recently because it got marketed and like it got such a big hype that is why like we heard it recently but it is all there it was all there got it now um we will also be learning about the basic concepts such as the composition of food any food item for it matters it has got a lot of nutrition right so we somebody who is learning this particular course should definitely know what type of nutrients goes in each type of food if we don't know that then obviously we won't be able to suggest a food or make a processed food for public so you will also be learning all these things and most importantly you will learn about a lot of chemical compositions so i would say if you are proceeding further with food technology courses please make sure that you have a keen interest in chemistry if you don't like chemistry i would say don't think about this course because you will learn a lot about chemistry while you are pursuing with your food technology program and you will also be learning to develop new systems wherein the food the food can be safe and can be resistant to any sort of harm because you know if you are keeping a food outside for long time obviously there will be bacterias that will be growing in the food and which can be harmful to people right so you need to know when and where these harmful bacterias will start growing which will make problems to our body as you know every food item for it matters contains microorganisms but all these microorganisms are not harmful for our body but at a certain point of time these things will become harmful so anybody who is working in this industry should also know when and how this microorganisms will become harmful so obviously like you will be learning all these sort of things too now let's look into the syllabus of this program now you will be seeing a lot of uh, syllabus that you will be learning in this program but don't think that these are the only things that you will be learning while you do your food technology course you will be learning so many things like food chemistry food analysis you will also be learn the learning the basics of food microbiology obviously about bakery and confectionery products packaging and then post harvest uh, physiology handling of fruits and vegetables you will also learn a little bit about finance accounts and auditing why are you learning that obviously when you get into the industry any undergraduate program or post graduate program for it matters it's not just about the scientific part of, part of it right because if when you get into the industry you need to know the basics of everything that is why you learn these things also also you will be learn about learning about food dehydration technology so as i said earlier don't confine your thoughts just to these these are some of the things that you will be or these are the major things that you will be learning in food technology but don't confine your thoughts there let's see the difference between bsc food technology and btech food technology bsc food technology is basically a 3 year program wherein btech is a 4 year program now when you look into the eligibility if you are pursuing for a bsc program in food technology you should have taken physics chemistry and either biology or home science for your uh, plus 2 but if it is a btech program you should have studied physics chemistry and mathematics for your grade 12 for btech program anyhow physics chemistry and mathematics are mandatory but in some of the institutes while you take bsc i have seen the an eligibility change so i would suggest you please check with the university where you are planning to get an admission and accordingly prepare yourself whether there are any entrance examinations for joining bsc and btech program i would say for btech obviously there are entrance programs including the national level entrance programs which are called the jee and stuff like that but uh, for the bsc program most of the institutes they don't conduct an entrance program as such it is all based on the marks that you score for your grade 12 however i will suggest you please check with the universities that you are planning to pursue your studies because each university they will have a different criteria accordingly you have to prepare for an entrance examination anyhow there is no 
national level single entrance examination which everybody has to write for pursuing a food technology course but there are different things which a university suggests now a bsc program is more of pure science wherein btech is more of applied science now let us see where all you can get employed or like what are the different designations that you can get in if you pursue your food technology program you can become a food technologist you can become a technical brewer now who is a brewer brewer is somebody who works on the production of beer right <laughs> so those things you can become a production manager you can even even become a toxicologist a toxicologist is somebody who studies or who understands the microorganisms the microbials as i said earlier it is all about like people should know when and where a harmful bacteria will grow in a food product now that is something called a toxicology so you you can also become a toxicologist if you are pursuing your food technology so there is like so many things now let's look into the premium institutes you have a lot of premium institutes which provide these programs now if you look into the programs it won't exactly be the program called a btech food technology or bsc food technology it may differ you have it in iit karakpur you have it in iit uh, sorry nit roorkela and also in national institute of food technology national institute of food processing technology these are some of the premium institutes but don't think that these are the only institutes that provide uh, courses which are related to food technology got it now if you are planning to pursue your food technology in masters degree that is also possible that does not mean that you should have pursued your bachelor's in food technology itself probably a student who has taken chemistry for your bachelor's degree can also pursue for msc food technology you can check about these things in the um, i would say the central university pg admission notification that is the place where you can find which are the universities that are pro i mean probably the central universities that are providing a course which is related to food technology and if you check their eligibility you know what are the courses that are that they are asking for um for you to pursue for your bachelor's degree so uh, what i wanted to tell you is don't think that like right after 12th i need to pursue a bsc food technology or btech food technology if my plan is to get into an industry which is related to food okay there are different options in front of you i'm sure that like you will have many more doubts which is related to food technology please make sure you pour in your doubts ask comments to this video so that i can help you further with this program hope this video was of help to you if it was help to you please make sure that you share this video with your friends also good luck